Kentucky Route Zero was astonishing. I have absolutely no desire to return to it ever because it's a slow and boring adventure game where you click, click, click for hours on end. It's difficult to call it a video game as I think it lacks the fundamentals that define such a thing. It is instead a work of art, deeply certain of the message it aims to project, meticulously crafted, framed, and colored so as to lock the viewer into its harrowing depiction of abandonment. It is, first and foremost, a story about callous disregard. Death is a common sight in Kentucky Route Zero, both in the literal sense, from ghosts to funerals to gravestones to churches, and the metaphorical, in its depiction of soulless buildings and empty ghost towns. And it's no coincidence that Kentucky Route Zero juxtaposes its interpretation of death with a story where everyone seems to be out of work. That juxtaposition didn't make much sense to me up until I figured out that it was being used as an allegory for a story about corporate greed. Kentucky Route Zero shows the literal and metaphorical corpses left behind when the usefulness of the individual is all dried up in the wake of an at-all-costs mindset. Houses reduced to shacks, cheaply built, never maintained. Bars, thousands of dollars in debt to distilleries, forced to close, all because a barkeep gave one too many drinks on the house. A village, flooded and destroyed because the power company didn't care to build a drainage ditch when they figured their investment wouldn't be returned in kind. A mine caved in with dozens of people still inside because their overlords wanted to make a better profit. And none of it mattered on the grand stage of big business. What's a million dollars to a billion, a billion to ten billion, ten billion to a hundred? It really isn't something I think about a lot because even one billion dollars is just such an astronomical amount of money to process. I could probably live really well for the rest of my life off of twenty million dollars with a kick-ass house and a new supercar every few years, but then imagine that multiplied 50 times over, and then another 10 times over, and then another 10 times over. You're not even in the shoes of Jeff Bezos yet, and now the median net worth of the average American household seems cosmically insignificant. No one needs that kind of money, and yet it happens anyways because people are just that greedy. That's why Kentucky Route Zero is a portrait of callous disregard. You play as one of those insignificant significant specks of dust, and it never fails to remind you just how insignificant you are, as you watch everyone around you lose everything, trapped in a vicious cycle of debt and unemployment. It looks amazing, too. The art style is extremely striking, not just because it's low poly, but because it's framed extremely well, with lots of strong shapes, shades, and colors, and some excellent animation to give the sensation of a moving camera. The sound is damn near perfect, the atmosphere is amazing as a direct consequence, and that soundtrack is incredible. The game isn't faultless, though. The pacing was way, way, way off. Some chapters move by in the blink of an eye, while others feel like they last hours. Acts 3 and 4 have over 10 chapters, while Act 5 only has one. The interludes are pretty weird too. Some last a couple minutes, but the others last for nearly half an hour. And the total surreality of Kentucky Route Zero really doesn't make for a solid narrative. Like, I honestly had no idea what was happening for most of this game, and I wasn't able to piece together a clear narrative until I read the plot summary on Wikipedia. But that was Kentucky Route Zero. It was cool enough, and it was very clearly a statement above all else. I just thought it was boring because I don't care much for adventure games anyways. But I can really appreciate it. If you like adventure games, you should have absolutely no qualms about playing Kentucky Route Zero because it has some super compelling themes and I swear that the artwork is some of the most striking I've ever seen. It's astonishing and sad. Very, very sad and pretty hopeless. The Bureau of Secret Tourism is supported by a generous population of river creatures whom I fix up and grill as necessary. I am environmentally minded and I believe all creatures are equally deserving of support in their transition to the next world. So I usually try to sing a little elegy, like, Small water creature, crab or frog, Now you know that sleep is all around us, Like a muggy, tranquil fog. Something like that. It's easier to come up with these songs when I'm hungry in a sort of 